We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hey there, welcome to GospelRhythms.com and LA Talk Live. And I am Trisha Mann Grant, your host. And next to me is... Dina Yoba. Dina Yoba, that's right. And she is my daughter. So, to, you know, I know Ro isn't here today because she's off having tea and crumpets with President Obama. Yes, I'm lying. Forgive me, Lord, on a Sunday. Yes, I was just joking. It's just a joke, y'all. But, you know, one day she will. Maybe next year. <laughs> but, you know, our sister Ro is making things happen, and she's doing her thing today. So we love you, Ro. We miss you already. And uh, you guys will see her next week. So I, I just want to kind of, uh, first of all, what's going on, lady? Uh, well, yesterday I had my um, fashion show which debuted my line, DYD, Dina Yoba Designs, and I was very grateful. Yay! I was um, very grateful to have that opportunity because not many kids, my, many kids my age get that opportunity, so I just thank God for that, and to be honest, I'm blessed every day, so Aww. I don't, I'm, I just accept them and I'm happy for them. And she is an inch taller than me now. <laughs> Yeah, you, you had some really good designs at jean Jerry Couturier. It was the extravaganza, the theatrical fashion extravaganza, and it was a great show. We had some wonderful people come. We had Amber Sawyer. She performed as Judy Garland. She did a great job. Thank you, Amber. We love you for coming out. And you too, Britt Prentice, who was in The Cleanup Woman with me, and he came out and sang in Frank Sinatra, and he also was our DJ on the side. So he did a wonderful job, and Marla Wells, and Keisha Ely, Marlo played Nat King Cole. Keisha Ely, oh my goodness, what did she do? Uh, she Billie Holiday and Aretha Franklin. And the models were all incredible. And of course, I cannot forget my husband, Mr. Tony Grant, who performed as Marvin Gaye and Sam Cooke. I was the host. And then to see my baby girl get up there and show her designs. And we thank Miss Jerry Legree for making it all possible for us to be there yesterday. So you guys missed it. If you didn't come out, for all those people here in LA, you didn't come out to that show, you missed a really good, amazing fashion show. But you know what? Last week, we also had an amazing guest on, and that was Mr. Rob Diggy, Mr. Music Composer, giving you love. Hey, Rob Diggy, because you shouldn't have showed up. You came out here all the way from Chi-Town, which is my hometown, Chicago. Yeah, baby, Windy City. That's right. There you go, Ness. Give it up for the Windy City. And I won't be there in the winter, but I love you, Chicago. <laughs> Y'all know I'm not, but. That what? takes brief people. It's cold out there it's from cold. what I hear. So. Ness, it's freezing. For it's Yeah. From what you hear, you've never been? Mm -mm. And it's cold, so as I cold, never will. As cold as you keeping in this station, you've never been in Chicago? I've never been in Chicago. I thought you had come, been in Chicago. <laughs> but listen, uh, Rob Diggy, thank you again. And he's got some good things coming up. And he'll also be composing my film as well, A Single Mother's Blues, in the very near future. So, Dina Yoba, you're going to be hanging out with me today? Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. Do, do you want to talk about one of the guests that we have on here? Because you know her so well as Auntie Imani. You want to talk about Imani? Um, hmm. My Auntie Imani, <laughs> Miss Imani Nakia. Yeah. And um, she was actually one of the models for uh, one of my pieces yesterday, which she wore a purple jumpsuit that mm -hmm. I uh, made. And, yes, uh, that was hot too, yo. She wore it with these, like, Im like these. they looked like Jeffrey Campbell pumps, but yeah. I know they were, like, hers so like yeah, yeah. Oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> that's good so Imani is in the house with us today and she will also be talking we're going to be speaking about domestic violence awareness this is the domestic violence where violence awareness month I can talk y'all I really can my tongue does work hey Ness you have something to say <laughs> but but most of all we've got Tasha Biltmore and she is here and I just want to tell you a little bit about Miss Tasha Biltmore and I want to thank you sweetie for being here with us today and and you know what she was destined for success Miss Biltmore aka Tasha B for all her close friends and hopefully I'll be able to call you that next week uh, she overcame countless obstacles to become the woman she is today struggling to raise her three daughters in Detroit Tasha was no stranger to hardships and yet she took fate in her own hands and relocated right here to Hollywood California yay 
and to finally pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an author, you go girl, and a writer for the screen and stage. So on June 25th of 2011, her first book, Innocent Eyes, was published and released. You guys make sure you go out there and get that book. And this remarkable book of her best poems gives the reader a look into the secret behind Tasha's eyes using one of the poems in her book. Tasha wrote the stage play, The Conversation, which tells her own personal story of surviving domestic violence. And it gives you an inside look at what took place uh, inside of her own home with a couple of dealings with domestic violence. Also, Imani, who's here today, has had uh, some experience with that in her family. She'll talk to us about that. And I actually have been a victim of abuse myself, but have overcome because we're no longer victims. We are victors. Amen. All right. So I know y'all can't see Tasha right now, but once we take our little break <laughs> and come back, we will talk to Tasha and Imani. And uh, thank you guys for joining us here on Gospel Rhythms. I am Trisha Man Grant. And what's your name? Dina Yo. <laughs> <laughs> she days and she's just in the zone. What are you looking at? <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks, guys. See you soon. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Richard Carr, Business Relations Manager for LA Talk Live. Did you know social media produces almost double the marketing leads of trade shows, telemarketing, direct mail, or even pay-per-click ads? And that about 46% of all online users count on social media when making that ever-important purchase decision. Hey, if you feel lost when it comes to social media, Top Tier Media can help you. Top Tier Media specializes in social media management and blogger outreach for beauty, fashion, health, and lifestyle brands. To learn more, go to www.toptiermedia.com. That's www.toptiermedia.com. Top Tier Media, the official social media marketing company of LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. Hi, this is Elena inviting you to join me every Wednesday at noon for Elena's Beauty Talk and more exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Donna Quarles, and I'm inviting you to join us every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. for a new show right here on LA Talk Live, The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. Join us as we discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. So don't forget to tune in to The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People, every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio r and Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hey, welcome back. And again, I am Trisha May Grant, and sitting next to me is my lovely 12-year-old fashion designer daughter, Miss... Dina Yoba. Hey, Dina Yoba. Yeah. So proud of this girl. So proud of her. All right, we've got two wonderful women here with us today. This is a very serious topic, you guys. So if you have any friends, sisters, uh, or hey, sister friends, <laughs> if you have any cousins, anyone who has been abused or any young people, uh, please make sure that, that you get them to check this out right now or even watch it later because we are going to go deep into 
some things. And we're going to keep it raw. It's going to be very real. We're going to be very transparent on this show today. And also for the benefit of helping someone. So we pray someone is blessed by what we have to say. So hello, Miss Imani Nakia. That's her stage name. <laughs> I'm good. I can't hear you. Are you on? Is she on this? Yeah, okay. I don't know why I can't hear you, sis. Can you? Can okay, you? there we go. Uh, now go. I hear you. Hey, <laughs> so you know, I, I was talking to you and I didn't know mm -hmm. that uh, you have dealt with domestic violence in your home through... Yeah, I never saw it or experienced it, but mm -hmm. my mother did. Um, mm -hmm. It was before I was born. My older sister, um, we have different fathers. Mm -hmm. And so her father was abusive. To your mom? To my mom. And then later on, which I didn't know, one of my mother's boyfriends was abusive. So I never seen it, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, she told me about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to hear about it, it was heartbreaking. Like, I wanted to go find the man myself <laughs> and <laughs> deal with it. do some things like, down. Yeah, so. Right. So it's terrible. what what happened though i mean was it was it a short lived situation because sometimes women stay in that for years and mm -hmm. years or did your mother just cut it uh you know in the beginning and say okay, I'm well done. with my both were short, short lived with my sister's father um she was with him for like a few years after my sister was born up until like 3 or 4 and then after that you know mm. she cut it off and then the most recent one, um, she was off and on with the guy, but he was only abusive to her one time. And mm -hmm. after that one time, like, it was really crazy. Like, he was dating her, and then she found out he was married to somebody else, and he just got oh, married. Wow. Yeah, it was really crazy. And so, like, he tried to push her down the stairs and shove her. Yeah, she had her, he had her hemmed up against the wall. Mm -hmm. And after that, you know, of course, it was over. Everything was over. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't stay in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she went to the police, even though she worked for the police, she went to the police, you know, right. to um, make a report and everything. So she didn't stay in it. Good. I Good mean, the her. one with my father, with uh, my sister's father was a little longer, mm -hmm. but the last one, she didn't say it in at all. No, Good. not at all. So what does mom talk about now when she reflects on that? Does she try to encourage other young ladies not to be in verbally oh, yeah, or she, mentally she abusive? always encourages young ladies mm -hmm. and then you know by the fact that she's a police officer <laughs> it makes her overprotective yeah. you know but it's in a good way because there's so much stuff happening out mm -hmm. here so you know with me and my sister she's very conscious of you know who will be around who we're we dating who we're we with you know yeah. what I'm saying just to make sure because you know a lot of women try to hide it Right. And that's the worst thing to do because mm. you may not have your life the next day. That's right. You know? That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> do, you, do you see any effects from what mom went through in her present uh, relationships or even just how she, you know, deals with? I know you said she's a bit protective of you guys. So yeah, that's one so thing. But I think it's both. Um, mm -hmm. She is. She's very, she can be, well, I can look at it as her being paranoid. Mm -hmm. But because of what she's been through and she's also um her stepfather was controlling and mm -hmm. i don't know if he abused her but i know he abused my grandmother mm -hmm. so she saw that you know growing up and then having to deal with it herself you know mm -hmm. it definitely played a, a role in you know the way that she thinks mm -hmm. um that's probably why she's overprotective. Like she didn't want me and my sister to be raised or have to deal with anything that she had to deal with growing up with her stepfather. Her stepfather was really mean mm -hmm. and really controlling, like beyond controlling. And then that's so. funny, the word control, because I think, Tasha, and I know we don't have the uh, camera on you yet, <laughs> but can we adjust that, Ness, when you get an opportunity? Because uh, I do want to switch things over and talk to Miss Tasha. But that word controlling, is pretty much where it starts. It's a it's a tough um, word for women mm -hmm. to take on because we were raised to believe that men, once you get married, especially in my case, men is the head of the household. Mm -hmm. So he was in control, or at least I felt he was supposed to be in control. Mm -hmm. So at the time I was going through the verbal abuse and emotional, mm -hmm. I just thought it was part of the journey, mm -hmm. part of what you're supposed to do as a woman. Wow. And being 18, you know, you don't question that. You just go with the flow just until you see, you know, mm -hmm. that it is something way deeper than that. And by that time, you're so far in it. Yep. And it's That's hard right. to get 
that control back. That's right. It's hard. And and I want, if there are any women out there that want to call in and talk to Tasha, because you actually have an organization uh, to help yeah. women, and I want to get to that. But, Ness, what is that number so we can at least give that number out? The studio line is 323-473-3100. Okay. And now help me, because I know I don't see that good sometimes. I'm getting older, but is there a camera for her? For Tasha? Uh, not just yet. Oh, give okay, me one not just. Second. Okay, we're going to give you one, one second. second. <laughs> we want to get back to Miss Tasha. <laughs> on we're going to go back to. Okay, yes, sir. I'm going to go back to Miss Imani. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's so true. It starts with verbal mm-hmm. and, and control. And next mm-hmm. thing you know, comes flying objects. Mm-hmm. Or maybe next thing is the pushing and the grabbing and the pulling. Aggress- yeah. Or, being you know, aggressive. being a very mm-hmm. aggressive physically. Unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. Yeah. Right. And and then uh, next thing you know, uh, the slap or mm. the punch. <laughs> Am I right, Tasha? Sure. I know we can't see you yet, sis, yes. but I know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So um, I think with the young ladies, which is why I have my 12 year old here, because I'm sure people are wondering why does she have that baby sitting up there in that but conversation? But she needs to know. Because if we educate our young baby girls at an early age, by the time they're dating and in relationships at 17 and 18, they will already know mm-hmm. that no, absolutely by no means are you supposed to uh, <laughs> be in that type of relationship mm-hmm. and situation. Let somebody talk to you like they've lost their mind. Mm-hmm. And, and if you can cut it at the root when it, when it first starts, mm-hmm. then that will help. You know, so Dina. Because you're sitting here yawning all no. on camera. <laughs> what do you, I mean, what, what do you think so far about what you're hearing being a 12-year-old? How does that affect your ears? What I think is that, I'm sorry. Um, what I think is that if you're in a relationship that you're, or if you're growing up with that type of surroundings as a young lady or a young man, when you're younger and you grow up with that, it's going to affect your trust in anyone. It's going to affect how you think of anyone. It's going to affect what you're going to say to them if they do something that's going to make you think that they're going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. So what I'm really trying to get at here is that (laughs) when you become in, when you get in that relationship, um, the only person you can turn to besides your family or your friends is God. Mm -hmm. Because if you actually take the time to have faith and you actually take the time to listen to what he has to say, then you can get out of that relationship. Out of the mouth of babes? Hello. (laughs) (laughs) Tasha. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta that's good stuff, sweetie. But Tasha, sometimes we we don't grow up. In that type of environment, I know I certainly did not. I never saw my daddy lay a hand on my mom, and I heard them argue one time. Right. (laughs) I didn't grow up in that, and my parents have been together, it's now this year, 48 years. Mm -hmm. So I've never seen or heard anything as far as emotional or verbal, physical abuse. So, of course, it was... You know, shocking for me because mm-hmm. I'm grown, I think, <laughs> at 18 and right. living my life trying to be a little wife at 18 and that kind of thing. <laughs> and to get talked down to. Um, and I was getting beat in the beginning for not being woman enough. He was a couple of years older than me, so he would invite people over. And because I was still in that mindset from coming from my parents' home and high school and junior college and I was still trying to figure all of that out Mm -hmm. and I wasn't ready to do woman stuff so I got abused and beaten and talked down to for not being sexy enough or not being this or not being that so it it really started with a lot of verbal and emotional (laughs) abuse and and why is that that men always want to attack the way you look first the, I, is that that self-esteem I, thing? I think it's, I think it's their <laughs> self-esteem, their yeah. low self-esteem. And I look at that today, and it's really hard because I tell a guy now, this is as good as it gets. So Baby, take it or leave take it. Take it or leave and it. And I'm right. not willing to change or compromise mm-hmm. who I am as a person to fit into any relationship. Mm-hmm. And I know you have to do a little adjustments, um, but I think they have to show me 
mm-hmm. before I'm willing to take that. You can't give me words of. Mm-hmm. And I think women who are victimized, especially teenagers, um, your first love, it's mm-hmm. all, he's everything to you. Mm-hmm. It's because he say those words. But mm-hmm. does his action back up yeah. what he's saying? Because love is not painful. That's right. Love shouldn't hurt. That's right. So if he's telling you he love you and on the flip side of that, his action is mm. very painful and demeaning, you need to question that and start looking at the red flags. And Actions. that's something that mm-hmm. I focus on when I talk to young people. It's that pay attention to not what's being said, but the action behind it. Mm-hmm. Because like my mom said, actions speak louder than words. So oh, of course. Definitely. And I see here that you have your own internet radio show tv radio which has over ten thousand weekly listeners so talk to me about that that is great thank you i I started that a couple of years ago um coming out here to la and trying to get my foot in the door Mm -hmm. with my stage play Mm -hmm. and hollywood is tough we don't know you (laughs) so we don't know you so we're not going to deal with you so um I put a billboard up, two yeah. billboards up, who is Tasha B, and yes. started an internet radio show. And that show is based on talking about relationships yeah. that can help you see the signs before you get into a domestic violence situation. Hmm. So we talk about the breakdown between men and women. Why do men think like this? Why do women think like that? Mm -hmm. And I bring on different guests. I Mm -hmm. had a panel of young Mm -hmm. high school kids on there, very insightful. Mm -hmm. And they are in high school dealing with domestic violence, like full-fledged domestic violence. With the mom and the dad? No, with themselves, in their relationships with their boyfriends, in the hallways (laughs) in school and that kind of thing. So we really spent almost a month really just talking to them about that and they came up with solutions and how to intervene okay when you see someone else is doing you know the abuses on their friend how do you get involved in doing that and how do you put yourself in that situation to open up Mm -hmm. and it's one of the things I use with my stage play with my actors Um, at the rehearsal the first rehearsal I pair them up and I say one of you are the victim Mm -hmm. and your friend the other one is the friend how would you get them out of the situation i need you to understand where i was at i didn't have a friend i didn't have anybody to talk to so mine was a 20-year secret Mm -hmm. until i brought out the conversation were you just afraid that he would kill you or hurt you badly no i was out of that relationship i was more embarrassed by the situation of what people would think or you get that oh i feel bad for you that i feel sorry that kind of thing people don't know how to react when you say i've been beaten for over five ten years what do they say they don't know they look at you like i remember the first time i did my poem the conversation which is based off of the play, and i did it and the whole room was just quiet like they didn't know if i should clap or hug you or what how long is the poem um, it's about uh, two two minutes. Two minutes. Mm, can you but, give us a snippet? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the conversation is. Excuse me, haven't we met? It was not so long ago. It was downtown, someplace quite chic. You know where you told me shallow things about you and me. I'm sorry, I haven't introduced myself. I'm that woman you made victim when you stole my innocence away from me. So tell me, what is it that you see when you look at me? Do you see the pain of many years? Or do you see the traces of my tears? Do you see laughter in my eyes? Or do you see the strength of a woman who no longer have to hide? Tell me, what is it that you see? Because when I look in the mirror, I see the pain and hurt that you put down on me. I see that I was your wife and victim, and for many years I made excuses for you and me, trying so hard to be all the things that you wanted me to be. Notice I said things, all those things you made me do, I cannot speak. Because today they humiliate me. See, I was your queen and you were my king, and I was ready to fight against anything that didn't believe or come between you and me. So tell me, what is it that you see? Because maybe your eyes can set me free. Oh, I'll go, but before I do, I just wanted you to know that you're forgiven. You see, I pray that you get the help that we both know you need so you can be a better king to that queen that I could not be. So tell me, what is it that you see? Because when I look in the mirror, I see a woman who's finally free. 
And that's the conversation. That's heavy, girl. So when you do that for the first time, and I had so many men come up to me Mm -hmm. and say, this is my wife's story. She told me about her abuse. This is my Mm -hmm. mother's story. Um, And the reaction after the play, the conversation was, it was uncomfortable. Sure. So many people said it was uncomfortable mm-hmm. to sit through it because my mother went through it. So now it's different when somebody tell you the story of abuse than to see it live. Mm-hmm. And I made this as realistic as possible. That's right. So it is a very strong play. It's not made for anyone under the age of 18 yeah. with the language and sexual content. I wanted you to see a glimpse of what really happened one night in my house. Yeah. And people got that. And it was real. I thank God for Vincent Ward. He's a very nice oh, guy. Oh, isn't he great? He's great, great, but he yes. is horrible. Woo! And that makes him a good actor because yeah. I was scared of him in rehearsal. So, yeah, you know. he's good. He's, he's I good. had a chance to play opposite Vince. I, yeah. I, yeah, I love working with him. He's really good. And he's on, um, what show is he on right now? The, the zombie show? The, yeah, the, the Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Walking Forgive Dead. me because I don't watch much TV, yeah. but I know I have I've saw something. I was like, you go, Vince. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, th- what's deep about what you just said is the forgiveness part. Do you know how difficult it is to forgive someone who has hit you and mm-hmm. called you names and told you you weren't this and you weren't that? That's rough. It is. And it, it didn't happen overnight. It mm-hmm. took years because mm-hmm. the longer I was angry, the worse my life was. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't helping myself by holding that in. Yeah. So I had to get on bended knee. Yeah. And give all this pain and all this hurt. To God. I had to give it to God That's and right. wish him the best to be a better person. Mm-hmm. So this don't happen to another woman, mm-hmm. um, another female, another child, another anybody. So once I did that, mm-hmm. then the doors just opened up. I wanted to do more yeah. to shed light on it, the signs mm-hmm. on it. So that's what I've been pushing yeah, but you know, it doesn't just happen to women. And I always, because I, I, you know what, I'm an advocate for the men in so many ways. Because that's why I have my, my other show, Man Talk, because right. I love for the men to be able to express their views and thoughts on things. Right. There are a lot of men out there. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of men out there who are being abused right now, because ver- especially verbally. Yeah, <laughs> They're being put down. Their manhood is being questioned. Mm-hmm. And that's just as wrong as it is for right. us mm-hmm. to right. be put down. So I look at it from both sides. It just shouldn't happen. It, Abuse, it, period. It, you know, right, Ness? Because he's a man. So mm-hmm. <laughs> you agree with true. that? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, correct. and that's true. And that's what you see. I did both parts in the play. Yeah. And the character, Rachel Voss, mm-hmm. um, which is being played by Tiffany Rebecca Royale. Yeah. She's great as being the victimizer. She's, I mean, she has to play that role, but she's yeah. totally breaking James' character down, Vincent's character down, mm. as out of her fear of mm. being abused. So she don't want to be abused, so she feels it's better to attack oh. Oh. verbally and emotionally. Okay. And so every chance she gets, she breaks them down in fear mm. of, and it's all out of fear. Right. That she don't want to be. And that's something I went through personally myself. Mm. When I went into other relationships, I found myself being very negative and I was very hard on guys you um, had a wall and you I just had this and, wall and, <laughs> and, but it almost come across as abusive and I was like you know I didn't like it when it was said to me so why mm-hmm. am I saying it to this person it, it's a vicious circle so, yeah. and somebody has to stop it exactly so you were woman enough to recognize that exactly. in yourself and then you stopped it so exactly. you can know how to talk to young ladies and other women and and tell right. them that yeah and have you do you know any men that have been abused Mm, verbally abused verbally abused mm-hmm. yeah. not domestic but verbally abused yeah mm. mm-hmm. and I don't you know I just don't get that we, we're supposed to love one another mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what happened to that commandment we're right. supposed to love one not another as we love God sure. and as we love ourselves uh-huh. so, so w- where does that come in to you don't look that pretty today. I was told that one day. Right. I, you, you looking real skinny and sick, and right. you just you just not that pretty anymore. And 
Uh, you used you to ain't be. never gonna be nothing. Yeah. You weren't anything before I met you. And I'm like, wait a minute, I was Miss Black Chicago before I met you. <laughs> I had a CD out. I was, was going, a I was a Sigma thing right <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what's he talking about? And it took me to actually stop from mm-hmm. listening to the poison right. and 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 really just examine the truth. The truth is, honey, whether I was Miss Black Chicago or in Jet Ebony Magazine or all the things that I did before I met you, let me tell you something, with or without that, I'm child of God. Right. I'm God's kid, so he made purpose. me for a purpose, exactly. and I am blessed with yeah. or without you. Right. So it, so I had to slowly and gradually get my self-esteem up. Right. And and I remember even noticing one day uh, saying something they didn't like or questioning something, and they threw a shoe. A big man shoe right. at my head. And I look back and here comes a shoe flying this close to my face as the wow. heel goes into the door and there's a hole in the door. Wow. So had that shoe hit me, yep. I don't know what could have happened. Right. Or or other things. You wanna say something sweet? Yeah, you go right ahead, baby. Um I just wanted to say that you sometimes have to think of when you're in that relationship, once you notice that type of abuse or violence um verbally or physically that god didn't send you that person it's basically they're just a demon and if you had (laughs) if you had a child with that person (laughs) if you had a child with that person then god sent you that blessing but not that person that you had the child with so i just love you can i tell you that i love my baby girl she's so (laughs) smart she teaches me every day all right you guys listen thank you continue to join us we're still here we're coming right back we're just gonna take a quick break i've got tasha biltmore in the house Mm -hmm. and miss imani nakia and of course my baby girl dina yoba i am trisha man grant and you are watching gospel rhythms on latalklive.com we'll see you in a minute Hello, this is Angela DeJoseph. Join me Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific for the Angela DeJoseph Show. Join me as we venture into health, wealth. We're going to give you news, interviews, and entertainment. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, Live 365, Radio Flag, TiVo Radio, and now live on Facebook. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Dr. Lewis Logan, inviting you to join me every Friday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon for Faith on the Front Line. We don't just talk about it. We are about it. That's our motto. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. We highlight the issues and challenges that we face today and how faith communities and leaders make a difference. So don't forget to tune in to Faith on the Front Line, exclusively here on L.A. Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio and R&B and watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. I just love Ness. <laughs> Ness keeps me. <laughs> he keeps me. He's yes, like, oh, yes, hi, you're yes. on camera. Yeah. I'm just checking. I got scarves messing up. Hey, you guys, Trisha Mancred here and Dini Yoba here. And we are hosting the show today. Miss Rowe, we love you, girl. We know you're busy doing your thing. And again, if you're just joining us, I'm with Miss Tasha Biltmore and also Miss Imani Nakia. Hi. And I just love these ladies. I love to see strong black women 
women that are doing great things and doing them with purpose. You know, we can take our sour lemons and turn them into lemonade. And I know that's such a cliche, but you know, I'm going to use it to the day I die because it's the truth. Right, Tasha? It is. Very it's much the so. the truth. I, I kind of, my slogan for my company is my pain is not in vain productions yeah, beautiful. so it's about taking that pain and saying i didn't go through this for anything you mm -hmm. know i didn't just go through it and i don't even know if i would be sitting here today if mm. i didn't hear a doctor talking to a nurse and saying she lucky she made it this time wow so i wondered how many times was i there and almost didn't make it and then it went through the point of thinking, this is the person I know who brought me into this world. Is this the guy that's going to take me out? So it got real deep, real quick, real fast for me. Mm. And as deep as it got, I, I also didn't want to share it. I was just totally embarrassed. What, what are you going to say when you tell everybody this, this, you know, this wonderful guy, you're in love, you're going to get married? How do you tell him he's a monster? On top of that, I mean, it's just like, how does he not know he's a monster? And I think, <laughs> and I think his upbringing might have had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that when a lot of guys um, go through abuse or are abusive, it's some type of abuse they've encountered or mm -hmm. was forced upon them. And it usually starts with molestation yes. at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, that brings me to my second. Um, play that's coming out in February, mm -hmm. the betrayal. The betrayal. Um, Where's it gonna be? Um, it's at the. It's gonna be at the Acme Theater. Yes. Um, on La Brea, and it's um, dealing with this young boy named Troy Johnson, mm -hmm. nine year old, and he was betrayed. He was molested by his babysitter, mm -hmm. and she was sixteen. So, mm -hmm. and then it all turns because I show you what he went through and how he kept it a secret for years. Mm -hmm. Like we most, most of us do that's been victims, mm -hmm. but also what happened to her because she victimized him. Um, she became a victim um, and she was forced to be a prostitute. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a tough, tough play. Were you, and I know you don't mind talking about things, so I'm going to ask you this real tough question. Mm -hmm. But were you sexually abused? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is it something that you discuss openly, or is it just something that you I just... haven't even brought that out okay. yet. I haven't even brought. Well, that you out brought yet. it out on Gospel Rhythms, yeah, I girl. Did. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even I haven't even <laughs> talked about that part mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. because it's so much dealing with. Um, just the abuse that I went through and mm -hmm. the rapes I went through mm -hmm. as an adult mm -hmm. that I think I've mastered or I understand why I got to that point. Okay. And it started with my own abuse, you know, mm -hmm. when I was younger. So. But it's amazing how all that stuff goes hand in hand. Yeah. I, I mean, I was uh, sexually abused mm -hmm. by my babysitters mm -hmm. and uh, they actually were watching me at um, my house while there was a party going on downstairs. Uh -huh. So sometimes parents, yeah, yeah, sometimes we're thinking just because my child is here in the house, they are safe. Right. And we were in my bedroom uh -huh. and the adults were down there having their little get together uh -huh. party. And sure enough, uh, and, and they were two twin sisters. Uh -huh. Wow. And so it's, you know, I didn't start talking about this until the last few years. And mm -hmm. like you said, we keep it in. But I think sometimes stories need to be told because I pray that what I just said helps some parents right. realize if you leave your child in a room with some teenagers and you've got a baby yeah. with these teenagers that you don't know that well, do me a favor, check on them every 10 minutes. Right. Make sure the kid's okay. Make sure you talk to your children at a young age and say, <coughs> honey, has anybody touched you the wrong way? These are your private parts. Right. All that pocketbook stuff, that's your pocketbook. Right. No, 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 no. Yeah. Understand their children, they need to know these are your private parts. No one mm -hmm. should touch your private parts and you mm -hmm. don't touch anybody else's private parts. That's true. And I just experienced that with my grandson earlier this year he come home from school well it's a big deal because the teacher brought us in and one of the students the young boy his friend steve um touched him mm -hmm. went to touch his private part in mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. so he was you know he automatically told the teacher what was going on 
And he said, that's not right. And he was still focused on, he's still my friend. Mm -hmm. He just did something bad. Mm. And so, you know, having to explain that and do that, that's what made me really want to do the betrayal, to really bring it out and to put him in it. Yeah. Um, although he has no speaking <laughs> uh, dialogue, but his presence there okay. is going to be the important part of uh, that play. And I wanted him to understand the storyline of what was going on and what happened to him. Yeah. That now he's aware of, you know, everything. He tells everything. Mm -hmm. You can't even show up and your boxers around him he'll say he'll just let it out <laughs> i was at such and such a house and they didn't have on the right kind of clothes Ooh, so good. He, and that's a good thing because they have to communicate yes. that because we don't know yeah and a lot of you got to get away from people telling you i'm gonna hurt somebody else in your family if you share this information Oh, yeah. Or are you going to get in trouble? Those, that's the biggest fear. That's what they do. That's yeah. They get to the mind. Okay, if mm -hmm. I scare you and tell you I'm going to hurt your mama, then, you know, or, or tell them something they don't want to hear, then they, they, they're afraid to talk. Exactly. Um, you want to say something, sweetie? You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Imani, have you experienced anything like no, that? I good. Haven't, thankfully. That's good. Thankfully. Yeah. No one <laughs> close to you you know of? Um. No. See, I'd just be I trying know. to pull out everything. Not that I know. I like, so what about your cousin? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not that I know. No. I mean, but the thing is, this cycle is so tight. It's so many people, people that we know that we right. don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. People right now watching or, or listening, they may not, uh, they may have been afraid for years to say something. I just yeah. told my mother. I just yeah. told my mother a few years back. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And I don't think she was ready for that information. Really? And I don't know. And that's the funny thing. See, here's, a, here's another thing about that. Mm -hmm. Then she wasn't ready, but now, you know. She wasn't ready when I told her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I was a little shocked. Right. But, but I, I thought about it later, and I didn't get upset. I just said, I understand. This is, this is a little trippy for her. Because she was thinking all this time her baby was safe. Right. And I wait 40 years later to tell her. She's right. like, or a little less than that. We I know you're 25. Know that. I'm 25. Right. Did I say 40? <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I'm younger than that. <laughs> um, but I wait all these years later to tell her. So she, and that's the thing. When we talk to people about it, they don't know how to react if they've never been abused sexually mm -hmm. or, or threatened that way. So what do you tell uh, the men? who come to your production and say, my wife went through that. D can you offer them any advice on how to handle their wives or be patient with them? I said, I, I usually make a joke. I said, so you know now why she told you to sleep on the sofa. Mm. And it's a, <laughs> a lot of times our frustration um, come from something in the past. And it's something that he may be doing, not realizing that he's showing her that pattern. So I tell them to be patient, especially mm -hmm. if she opened up to you. Right. You're supposed to be her best friend, somebody that she can trust with this information, especially if she haven't shared it with family members and so forth. Sure. Um, for me, it was used against me. Um, and Come on. It, 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 it was. Because if I tell a, a person that, they'll, well, I understand why. Cause you're, oh, you know, they, they, I, a dig. you deserved they gave you a dig. what you got because I <sighs> talk. And at that point, it's wow. time for me to get out the relationship with you. Yeah. So I, as yeah. I grew, I got tough, Good. real tough, real quick. And mm -hmm. I just have zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. I, I tell them I have zero tolerance. My personal life is drama free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're either with me or you're not. Okay. Or my motto, you're either on your way or in my way. And <laughs> usually, <laughs> okay, you know I'm still in that, right? right. Yeah. Okay, I'm on, taking that one. <laughs> on your way or in my way. It's no, there's no in between for mm -hmm. um, me and my personal life because, as you know, in this industry, it's so hectic in a professional life, and you have to deal with so many different. Um, personalities and characters and so forth and trying to put a production together and or even a radio mm -hmm. show, get your material together and get mm -hmm. the guests on. That's right. a lot of work. You see what happened up in exactly. here today. And, so, and, and traffic, y'all, for those that tuned in for the live show. First of all, I'm glad you brought that up. Let me apologize to all the viewers if you stuck around waiting to see what was going on. I really was sitting 
on the 405. If y'all come to L.A., don't ever get on the 405, please. I pray <laughs> to worst. God it is the worst. <laughs> We're all sitting there and just sitting there <laughs> and right. sitting there because obviously there was some accident or something. It took a minute, but thank God it finally cleared up. I was really nervous because I really wanted to do this show in lieu of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So um, I wanted to ask you, too, about uh, specifics about statistics and yeah. how many women do are you aware of how many women or men out there are actually being abused uh daily or weekly every monthly. nine seconds every nine seconds every nine seconds a woman is being abused or assaulted by me. and it's true and I, and the reason i know it's true because now i since i've been a, a victim i pay attention when mm. i'm out and i'm I see it all the time with verbal yeah. abuse, arguments in the car, just in traffic. You yeah. see the mannerism and that kind of thing. And I'm like, wow, this is way, yeah. it's so much bigger than me. Yeah. Um, when I started this, it was about me and my pain. And it's so, it's so much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. It's way bigger. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that these actors that I'm working with have joined me sure. and stuck by me and wanting to help bring awareness and um we just got jill marie jones to you know she's playing yes. my character she's playing she's very Stacey nice Love. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. nice good good she's one of the things she said i didn't know about domestic violence she said call me crazy but it's not a part of my world it's not a part of my life so i didn't even know yeah and she said after you made us do that exercise i was forced on my way home to just think about it and I got to do my research and talking to people in my circle and it's big mm -hmm. and so she's like I'm glad to be a part of something that's going to bring mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. to this issue and mm -hmm. and I tell all actors that work with me I'm about making change and saving lives mm -hmm. at the end of the day it, we want to entertain the people that come but at the same time it is a lesson to be learned yes. so um, come out with that in mind and yeah you're gonna get great entertainment from great actors but we're gonna save some lives good and when is your show um the conversation will be next year okay. we're still working on a date for that good. um and like i said the betrayal is february 22nd the betrayal february 22nd all right you all i want you to keep those those dates in mind ness I do have a question, though. Yeah. Um, I know you, you love statistics and stuff, so that's always amazing. One thing that I, I have brought up in the past and I've always asked is what has, um, maybe it has been brought up, but what, what is the effects of, for example, music and television um, affecting kids hmm. and maybe socially conditioning them as a young age as well as a relationship at home? Has it, I don't know if there's been a study that shows has it been only affected by what they have encountered in the home, whether they have mm -hmm. been abused sexually right. or seen abuse in their home or only through social conditioning and television because cartoons are aggressive right. as they are and, oh and violent. They are. I, cartoons I mean, are like adults. They, they're they're not, there yeah. for adults they're these not, days. Not, now, before I finish, yeah. now, for example, w one big example I use is The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. I remember when it came out around my age, you know, it was, it was a cleaner cut. It was edgy, but right. it was cleaner cut. Right. Now, when you turn it on, I mean, they're saying from the B word <laughs> to right. sexual right. doing you. Right. Right. It's, it's, it's like, everything. wow. Right. It's yeah. like really, really mm -hmm. evolved. You know, it's like I have a daughter. I don't even let her watch the new Simpsons. She can right. watch the old stuff. <laughs> right. But the newer right. stuff, I'm watching it. And I'm right. like disgusted at, at times. <laughs> exactly. Like, That's why I have Netflix. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I Netflix well. people stay <laughs> away from Gable. Right. Yeah. But I, I don't know if you have come across any of those studies or anything related I, to what I asked. I, I haven't paid attention to the study but i am aware mm -hmm. that it's a lot of abuse in kid stuff and one of the ones was and it's funny that i bring this up it's the lion king and in that scene where it you know he slapped the the brother i think slapped the the wife or the the sister-in-law um well, to I show don't it. remember that. To show, yeah, <laughs> that he did. did. you see the Lion King? Yeah, the Lion King. King. That happened. He yeah, slapped. Uh -huh. He slapped. Oh, the girl. I must have gone to the bathroom or something. Was the, <laughs> he, was, he slapped her, but they, they. I mean, but they cleared it up oh. to explain it, but to actually show it, wow. you know, in a in a, a production for kids wow. that's supposed to be Lion King. It's it's kind of scary. Yeah. And yeah, I don't look at 
cartoons and stuff like that. I think video games are bad, bad, oh, bad. Video games. I, I don't even bad, want to start with that. It's yeah, not even. I, I, I don't oh, know what that little so demo funny. game is with Mickey and Minnie on it. And no, no, remember strippers that little boy? What? Strippers on Mickey Mouse? <laughs> no, I'm talking oh. about Grand Theft Auto or something like that. No, not Mickey Mouse. No, Ness. <laughs> no, 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 that's what I was getting to, though. Right, right. That little boy that got caught up into all that mess back east, driving a truck, right. flying to Vegas yeah. by himself, the nine-year-old boy. Right. They're saying that, that two weeks before he flew by himself in an airline, he was actually playing Grand Theft Auto, and he got into the truck, oh my and God. that allegedly so he, he fell. So out what he saw so Grand they, Theft Auto. Right. they yeah. can't determine or decipher the difference between reality and, and, and non-reality. And because they have their fantasy. imaginations. And, and, and they see, see this. And and oh my you God. have to educate mm-hmm. your kids. It's up to the sure. parents to educate. Um and you can't just buy it because I know we want to please our kids right. and get them what they want, the hottest thing out. But right. really pay attention to what content is in that. And yeah. then if you're going to go ahead and get it for them, educate them on it. Sure. Let, at, sit down with them and it, play a couple of games with them and explain it to them. Like, mm-hmm. this is this really wouldn't happen in yeah. real life. You see how, you know, you got to really let them see it, how it corny this is. It starts with us. It starts with the parents, and that's why I try my best to talk to her. I talk to her so much, she's like, okay, mom, mom, okay. (laughs) Enough. Like, okay, I don't need to know all that. I'm like, hey, if I die tomorrow, I want you to know as much as you can. And I know it's kind of hard because we don't want to give them too much because they're so young. I mean, she looks, like I tell her all the time, you look like you're 25, but she's only 12. You know, she's taller than me, So, but I still have to... You know, try to have a medium, a difference there for her. What do you have to say? I just want to say that um, it not going back to the domestic violence. um, Mm -hmm. It's not only the uh, wife or husband being virtually abused, because I have a couple of my friends who are being abused by their fathers Mm -hmm. not only sexually but verbally and physically and have told their because if their parents are divorced Mm -hmm. they're sleeping at their friend their dad's house and their dad would do something to them and then they'd go tell their mom and their mom would be like okay i'll have a talk with your dad and not do anything about it okay you just gave me some new information so we're definitely gonna talk about that later um no i mean you know in in addition to what you're saying um, well, they're not like my super duper close friends. Well, yeah, but it's someone that you know yeah. and it's happening and, and that's right. pretty serious. So they would go, I'd, I'd say, you need to tell the police, you need to tell someone. Mm-hmm. And this happened like last year and um, before summer. She's like, well, no, I don't want to tell because my dad said he'll do this. I'm like, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter what your right. dad said. Mm-hmm. You, This is a time where you're supposed to be disobedient wow. to your parents if they're doing that to you. Any That's other right. time, if they're asking you to do something, don't be disobedient towards that. But if they're telling you they're going to do something to you, another family member or to you, don't listen to it and go and tell. So she actually um, was asking her mom if they could go tell the police and her mom was like okay we'll do it like the next day and then didn't happen we'll do it another didn't happen right. so and that's and that's Tasha. these, that's Girl, these that's women today me. that's these women today and i feel so bad about oh the peterson God. um um is it patterson mm-hmm. the, the uh, football player the mm-hmm. son that got killed i just heard about that it's what happened i, I the, don't get the full story the boyfriend mm-hmm. the boyfriend uh-huh mm-hmm. mm-hmm to his, the baby's mother mm-hmm. killed the his, football the player's football player son, son two-year-old son yeah. yeah but at some point and Oof. i and i don't want to say she was involved because she wasn't there in the house so she wasn't there at the time that it happened but you had to see signs there are always signs you had to see signs that always. this man was even even if he said something mm-hmm. about that child being there mm-hmm. and a lot of times men are And I'm so glad my daughters are way stronger than I was at 25 and 27. Mm -hmm. And my daughter said, as soon as a guy mentioned that, you know, I can't go anywhere. Why we got to always take your son? She's out of that relationship. Like, my son is with me. He's going to get before you get anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's going to be here before you even get here. Mm -hmm. So women who don't stand up like that because they want to be in a relationship so bad and they Mm -hmm. think this guy is all of that and you put your kids on the sideline, 
this is what happens and that and now this two-year-old boy is dead because at some point i have to believe that her love for this man was a little bit more than her care for the son she had to know yeah something a two-year-old son i i wouldn't as a mother mm-hmm. in a new relationship and you're not married and you're not right. the father leave, leave my two-year-old baby. son Unless with I know. you <laughs> for and sure. we not married yeah. oh no it That's wouldn't terrible. happen it wouldn't have happened. but but back to it, it's like here this is messing me up how <laughs> does a mother either not believe her child which I'm sure there are children, because the police have said there are children out there that do lie. Right? Mm-hmm. How do you leave, not believe your child and then not do anything about it? I don't mm-hmm. care who it is. Right. You know, oh, I don't she understand She could be so that. deep in denial. Uh, or she could she have gone through the yeah, same thing. Yeah, she could have gone through the same thing. And she's just afraid to stand she, up. Yeah. She's scared. That yeah. is fear. Be. What do we it's do a, about that? How do we make women aware we, that we, this cast to We stop? educate them. And that's what I'm doing with... Um, my nonprofit organization I'm starting next year mm-hmm. called Sparkle House. Nice. And it's about women who's been abused mm-hmm. to help bring that sparkle back into your life and not Beautiful. just physically, but emotionally yeah. and to talk about it. It's okay to talk about that pain. Yeah. It's okay. Right. It's it's part of Good. life. It's it's a healing thing. And the more you talk about it, the better you are. I want to help Definitely. you with that organization yeah. because that's one of my causes i've always wanted to be a part of that so you and i right. definitely need to yeah, connect we will with definitely that. talk but yeah. sparkle house is gonna be um we're changing the look of domestic violence mm-hmm. so that's my campaign Beautiful. for 2014 is showing you the different looks of domestic violence and what they used to show us is a beaten woman or torn or she didn't want to be seen and there's so we many are, levels. <laughs> we, we are so hot right now. It's yeah, ridiculous. And yeah. I think we're the, biggest, the biggest <laughs> payback mm-hmm. is to let him see you not broken. That's yeah. the only reason they do it. It's not about they get off on it. It's mm-hmm. controlling who you are on the inside Good. to break you down. And once they see that you have regained that sparkle back, oh yeah, mm. that's the biggest payback ever. Love it. I love that ever. name, Tasha. Yeah. That name is hot. I love that. Because I like That's a lot of sparkly. Stuff. You from Detroit, yeah. so you yes. know. Right, right. You two Detroit women. Shout <laughs> town. Shout town in the house. Yes, Dina, baby girl. You okay. want to say something? Um, are you, uh, <laughs> but you got to make it quick, sis. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> friend. <laughs> okay. I'm not say her okay, name. now listen. Uh, let me stop you. Because, see, some things, you know, legal wise, if we put in too much business like that out there, you know, the police want to come in and, and handle stuff. So I tell you what, we're going to, is she okay? All I want to know is, is she okay no, and is she better? she is fine. Okay. Part of me believed her and part of me didn't because she does have a tendency to, <laughs> you know. And that's another thing. God, dude, it's, it's like. <laughs> that's what I was trying that's to a say. Hor- there have been people out there that have been lied on about, uh, you know, being molesters. And they really that are not so. And that's terrible. To the foot yeah. athletes. Yeah. To get money. Or the the right to be raped and everything. Mm. She's perfectly you know, fine. She's good. perfectly fine. Um, That's good. She did something about it, but she had told me it happened more than once, yeah. and it I found it didn't happen. Like okay. It just happened once. So. Yeah. Well, thank you, sweetie, and I'm glad you love and care for your friends, and <laughs> always, you know, we have to intervene. Uh, as a community, uh, if you see someone hurting, I will see strangers. And if they are looking really low, I'll ask them, you okay? Right. You need anything? I don't have to know you to love you. Right. I just love people. And uh, we, we just have to love on others more. I know there's some crazy folks out it's there. There's some people you have to be yeah. careful of. I understand <laughs> that. But God gives us, especially the Christians, mm-hmm. uh, a, a gift of discernment mm-hmm. that we have to tap into. Because, for instance, a guy walked up to me today yeah. outside the car and he wanted to <laughs> use the phone and he had a little baby there but it could be a she stood there just in case that yeah. was a distraction right. and just it's sad it it's, yeah that's sad we live in a society <laughs> where you're so funny and i know you will go detroit i call she's it detroit why do detroiters always say that because i always say you don't want me to go detroit right hey hey but you don't want me to go shot town come on now praise jesus i go shot town more seriously oh no you didn't see we're not gonna start this Right now. <laughs> We're not gonna go I got one minute. We got to wrap this up. Thank you, Ness. Ness, uh, is there anything else you want to say from a male's point of view on this whole abuse uh, situation? Education and awareness. 
good. You know, you have to make good everybody stuff. aware of this. You know, they should do something in schools. But yes. unfortunately, Absolutely. they do not do that. I know. I, yeah. I don't know why. Now yeah. schools are even getting more uninvolved. Uh, one last point back to that little young boy yeah. that, got, that flew across country by himself and thought he was driving Grand Theft Auto. The dad came out playing, uh, saying, you know what? I've gone to the police. I've gone to the school. I've gone to the principals. I've gone to X, Y, Z. And they just tell us, oh, well, can't help you. We can't help you. Right. Exactly. But, but if he was to whoop his child, then boom. he's right. going to jail. Right. Exactly. Oh, right. now that's a whole nother show. Don't get me started <laughs> right. on that because I have some serious that's issues. That's another show. Girl, that's Total. another show. Tasha, we know you've got Chapter 32, Love is com- Complicated, and my love for hip-hop, East versus West, and also Real Women Talk on network television is going to be a reality show project you're working on with Creative Minds, right? Yes. 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 Good, good, good. I'm so happy for you Thank and you. proud of Thank you. you. And uh, I would love to join forces and help you to make a difference in society when it comes to domestic violence. You guys, make sure you check out my CD, too, because there's a real raw song on there called Don't Beat the Love Out of Me. And you know the story. Yeah. I told you 50,000 times in the last six shows. Uh, <laughs> it's off of a true story. So Don't Beat the Love Out of Me. Go to cdbaby.com uh, forward slash Trisha Man Grant. I want to thank you, Tasha Biltmore, for thank being you. here with us today. Thank you guys, you. make sure you support the conversation February 22nd, right? That's betrayal. That's betrayal. I knew that. I was the just betrayal. testing you. I knew that. <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> the betrayal, February 22nd. And Imani Nakia is a dancer, an amazing choreographer and dancer. So anyone that needs her services you check me out and check her out on facebook <laughs> facebook.com instagram and instagram cool breeze c-o-o-l-b-r-e-z-z-e-e and i'm on twitter same name cool awesome breeze. awesome and dina yoba is fashion designer and you can see me because i want nobody to hit my baby up first okay <laughs> <laughs> i gotta protect I her she's I 12 have facebook. Facebook. It's, she does not have facebook no. but she can hit me on facebook trisha l man grant is on Facebook. I just seriously always give you guys some love because I appreciate you for being with us. Ro, we love you. We miss you. We'll see you next Sunday. You all may not see me. I got a film to shoot, but I will be back. And God bless you. And you're watching LA Talk Live, GospelRhythms.com. I am Trisha Man Grant, and my co host for the day is Dina Yoba. All right, peace out. What's up, everybody? I'm Zacardi Cortez, and this is GospelRhythms.com, Heather's Party on Earth. Hey, this is Trisha Mann Grant. And Tony Grant. And you're listening to Gospel Rhythms Talk Live Radio on LATalkLive.com. Yeah, a what up, a what up?